Hello everybody and welcome back to part 4 of this career mode that we are doing in F1 2020 with Geki's 98207 uh, absolutely amazing mod. Uh, this is obviously one of the best mods that you can get on any of the Codemasters games. In fact, it's really, really well done. It's uh, nice in depth. Um, they've basically, you know, done all they can uh, with uh, all of the things that uh, F1 2020 allows you to do. But enough uh, licking, as uh, we, we Brits call it. And uh, let's just uh, jump straight into the race weekend. Of course, we had a Interesting last race uh, in in Malaysia, um, picked up our first uh, race win of the season. Uh, of course, a little bit, a little bit skewed, but uh, we take those. Um, <laughs> and uh, we also uh, took the lead in the championship, which was quite interesting. So let's hope we can hold on to that today. We won't. We won't. We just won't. But we're gonna try our best, aren't we? <laughs> Um, Sauber uh, is, is looking good so far. We're getting some upgrades onto this race. Uh, we're looking to improve on our reliability as well. Uh, as you guys have seen so far this season, our gearbox has been wearing out very, very quickly. And I believe that is uh, actually part of the mod. Of course, these cars are nowhere near as reliable as they are nowadays. They would go through gearboxes and engines every race or qualifying session and nowadays they have to get through what three engines every year it's absolutely mad the the reliability of the the cars nowadays and just shows how far the engineering has come isn't it and uh yeah we we can barely get through one race uh, <laughs> with our gearbox so yeah kind of sad but um we're just uh hoping for some good things here at Zandvoort. i don't think our car is going to be as competitive as it has been before uh, as it's a fairly high downforce track and our car seems to suit the lower downforce ones uh, but uh, we'll try our best of course and see if we can get a good result and uh, well let's uh, jump straight into the one shot qualifying session Here we are then sitting in the garages of the Zandvoort track. And I believe this is the first game that Zandvoort was on. Uh, of course, we didn't come here in 2020, which is actually quite weird uh, to think about. There were a lot of tracks in this game, which, of course, we, we never went to. Uh, Vietnam, of course, we know um, pretty much about half the calendar, to be honest. There were tracks, of course, that we raced in real life that uh, we never got on the game. Mugello, Nürburgring, Turkey... Yeah, be a bit of a shame, but uh, anyway, let's jump straight into our one-shot qualifying session, and uh, we're going to begin on the main straight. Uh, this uh, is, of course, the uh, older version, uh, before Codemasters really knew uh, what the track actually looked like for the first time. In through turn one, pretty simple. Through these next few tight and twisty corners, very easy to understeer. Of course, this corner is a lot more banked than it is in this game. That was the one thing that shocked me driving this again. It's just how actually fairly flat that corner is compared to what it is in real life and the more newer games of their front series. This right-hander in modern cars is maybe a small lift, a downshift in this. is, yeah, a lot more difficult. This next right-hander, very understeery. And this one, it's very difficult to spot out your braking. And often you find yourself running wide. This next one, the car actually does feel pretty good through here. You just got to uh, plant your throttle and you should be able to launch the car all the way down this main straight. Uh, break it at the 50 board there. This uh, right left, I guess you can call it chicane. It sort of is a chicane, isn't it? But a bit awkward as well. The curbs are very, very unusable around here. So... Through the basically last corner, onto the bank's last corner. And that's going to complete our lap here at Zandvoort. And it's decent. It looks like it's going to put us P10, which isn't too bad. But I believe our teammate is a 
a few spots higher than us, so we definitely should have been doing uh, a little bit better on our lap. And these are the qualifying results. Mika Hakkinen on pole position, then Coulthard not too far behind. Schumacher only a couple tenths behind them, and then Fisichella actually beating out Eddie Irvine. Irvine really does struggle in qualifying, uh, as he did in real life. But then, oddly on this game, he does seem to come back uh, during the races. So, yeah, quite, quite, quite weird how Irvine works on this game. But let's jump into the race. It was 35 years ago that the late great Nicky Lauda took his 25th and final Grand Prix win here at Zandvoort. He came from 10th on the grid to beat his McLaren teammate Alain Prost by just two tenths of a second. Well, Zandvoort is a very different circuit today, of course, but still one with an incredible legacy. And we're going to add to that. Welcome along to the 2020 Dutch Grand Prix. Zandvoort circuit, 14 corners, 10 to the right and four to the left, with plenty of steep camber and elevation changes to keep our drivers on their toes throughout a 2.6 mile lap. Let's take a... Well, you're taking a sneak peek at the Zandvoort track, and I think it's a fairly mixed opinion track, isn't it? Some people like it, some people hate it. I think if you're Dutch, obviously, you're going to automatically like this track, which, uh, yeah, makes sense. I can't lie. <laughs> um, it's, it's sort of your, your big boy circuit in the entire country um, that most people seem to know. So, yeah, that's, that's, that's fair enough. But me personally, I, I'm kind of mixed on it. It's, it's all right. It's, it's not... You know, I don't like it. I don't hate it. It's just, it's okay. I don't moan when we come here, but, you know, I'm not overly joyed when we do. But anyway, enough yip-yapping. It's time to go racing as we wait for the five red lights to go out. And we are underway here at the Dutch Grand Prix. And as normal, it's a pretty poor start from us. We've already been jumped by Villeneuve onto our left. I think we'll stay in 11th place for now. We'll see if we can pick up any more places over the next few corners. We've got Magnussen trying to come up our outside, but we just block him off and slot nicely into 11th place. And a lot of battling going up ahead. In real life, of course, this line that I just took would have been absolutely OP, but the banking is not banked enough on this game, so it kind of just washes you out and yeah, just gives you a huge chunk of understeer. Villeneuve then trying to get past first. We're going to try going around the outside of Villeneuve, but there's no space there. Maybe up the inside of this next corner. We're going to give it a go. So close to contact. And we just have to back out of it. As the damage model on this mod is very, very sensitive, we cannot afford pretty much any contact. It's pretty much permanently on simulation. So you just have to be super, super careful. But... It looks like we've just lost one place on this start and we're going to have to use the next few laps to try and gain some of them back. I uh, definitely know where I'm quick on this track compared to the AI. And that's Frentzen! That is Heinz Harold Frentzen who has just binned it into the wall. I think there was someone else who did as well. I think that was Barrichello. And that is two drivers crashing into the wall there. And Frentzen just gives it a bootfall coming out of that corner. And then I believe the Stewart of Barrichello just does the exact same thing. And this is a Jordan. I believe this is Damon Hill, who, when Barrichello reverses, and Hill just crashes straight into him. And, well, that's one driver out the race. I think Barrichello managed to survive it, uh, but I don't think Frentzen did. And that's, that's another car out the race. That's a Tyrrell. Um... I think that's Takagi who's ended up in the wall. I do know the other Tyrrell's name this time. I had to uh, look it up the, the time before. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's uh, three drivers out already and we're only on lap three. A sign of things to come. That's as we get ready to go racing again here in Zandvoort. And the AI do love to go late on these restarts and we finally underway about halfway down the main straight. Which uh, means we're not really going to be able to go for any moves. But Villeneuve breaks super early. And, well, even with him breaking early, there's still nothing we could have done there. So we just have to sit behind for another lap. This is the thing about Zandvoort. If you don't go for a move into turn one, it's very difficult to go for a move anywhere else. It's a fairly short track. Only about a minute and 30, even in these cars. Um, maybe even down to a minute 20. But as you can see, around this final corner... The AI just do not seem to like it at all, and they go super slow. So we've just gained two places. Can we make it three? If we go up the inside of Barrichello, which we do, 
move ourself up into P7 and Lacey nearly lo loses it and nearly crashes into us. That would have been bad for, for, for the Sauber team, but luckily he managed to keep it just about under control. And we've gained, what's that, four places in the space of two corners? We'll definitely take that. We will definitely take that. Over the next few laps then, we are trying to gain up to fifth place. This is Fisichella around the final corner. Again, the AI not really using the full throttle round there, which is quite weird, but he just outbreaks us completely into the first corner. I was not expecting that. And, uh, well, we've run out of rich mix, so uh, we're going to be at a less of an advantage than we previous has been, previously have been. Uh, so that's one of the Benettons out of the race, I believe. And, uh, well, it's uh, obviously not Fisichella. He's right in front of us, so it must be Alex Verz who has spun at the same place that a couple of other drivers already have. And I can tell you already, this is going to be a black spot for the rest of the race. You can kind of just tell uh, from the AI uh, when they keep on making mistakes. And actually, we're not going to choose to pit along with Fisichella. We're going to try and go long on these tyres. As the tyre wear actually isn't too bad around here, so we move ourselves up into stick. But we are on older softs. And uh, oh, so someone's out of the race. I think that's the other stewards of... Uh, Yang Magnuson, who has had a mechanical failure, and he's pulled off to the side of the track. And, uh, well, we're down to 15 cars now as we wait for Fisichella to go green. Of course, he dictates the pace, and he's finally gone. Not sure we're going to be able to go for a move into Turn 1. I think we're going to give it a good old go anyway. We look up the inside, but Fisichella is really, really good on the brakes into that first corner. Seems that Benetton has a lot more downforce than we do in this Sauber. So we definitely know where our weaknesses are and uh, where we need to improve. And that's a, that's a VSC. Another crash has happened, and that is Michael Schumacher. Michael Schumacher has crashed out of this race, and that is, I believe, Nakano or Jene in one of the Minardis, and Schumacher had absolutely nowhere to go. And, well, that's uh, really unfortunate for... Schumacher, as he was battling with the likes of the McLarens in this race, as we finally might be able to get a move done on Fisichella. Again, he's super late on the brakes into turn one, but I think we're going to get the better drive out the corner, and we do, and we move up into the lead of the race. We just got to extend this stint as much as we can, and we come in on lap 15, as these tyres have absolutely zero rear grip left in them. But wow, uh, yeah, there's a... Uh, not that many top runners uh, left of a threat now. It's uh, Irvine who probably is going to storm off into the distance. And I believe both McLarens have had some kind of issue and will have to claw their way back through the field. Not sure what's happened to Hakkinen. But I think Coulthard is fairly close. You can see that he is in fourth place. So something has definitely happened to Mika Hakkinen. He's not had a good race. We've got another safety car. This is, I think, our third one, and this is the Arrows. And, yeah, just loops it round. This is De La Rosa, I believe. And he's reversing, and he's he's crashed into someone. I can't quite see who that is. I think it might be his teammate, judging by the colour. It is! Both Arrows cars have crashed into each other. And that is super, super painful. And, well, that just wasn't very smart from either of them, to be honest. And, uh, well... Yes, uh, we're now down to 12 runners in this race as we catch back up to Irvine. And that's our team. That's, that's John Alacy. That's John Alacy. Who has, has he, he's made the same mistake. He's made the same mistake that about six other AI have made today. And he's out of the Dutch Grand Prix. So I'm Sauber's last hope in uh, scoring any points today. And uh, while we wait for the safety car to get going, uh, we, we can't shift up. We literally cannot shift up. Our gearbox has gone again. We're having so many reliability issues. And Fisichella has hit us. He's lost his front wing. And because of the unique uh, penalty system in this game, we get a five-second penalty for that. And so does he. So, well, we've already made our last pit stop. We're going into the end. So we're going to have to create a gap behind now as Fisichella, I believe, will be coming in. To change that front wing, obviously he cannot stay out like that as we wait for Irvine to get going. Obviously there's no way we're going to be able to fight him. As uh, even on the restart there, you can just see the pace of that Ferrari. And well, he will just storm into the distance most likely and we will never see the, the light of day from him again. And uh, we're going to have to manage this five second time penalty. 
But uh, luckily, uh, literally nothing else happened for the rest of the race. We managed to come home in second place on track. Cool Thod, though, was just eight tenths behind us. Still get a podium, though. Uh, I think that's our, what, third podium of the season? <laughs> Uh, which is absolutely incredible for a Sauber driver this early in the season. But let's go. What a great race, Dan, and what a magnificent victory here at the Dutch Grand Prix. Talk to me, Ants. What was it that set them apart from the competition today? It was a question of right place, right time today. We were looking at an entirely different race before the safety car came out, but they were able to take full advantage after the field had been bunched up. Looking at the podium, you can see that red suit familiar to fans across the globe. A world-class win for a world-class team. Ferrari do it again. Wow, what a what a weird and wacky race. We, we can't just have a normal race in, in this season, can we? Which I think I've mentioned this before, makes this a real pain in the mmm to edit because like I <laughs> I have to go through and like you know review all the crashes and you know it's it's not fun. And here's hoping that the next race will be boring for my sake. <laughs> Obviously you guys are, are probably absolutely loving it, but you know. Yeah, not 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 ideal at all for for me editing wise. It, it, it does it does take like an hour or two to cut everything in and out of the race. But Eddie Irvine ends up winning. Then uh, I think that's his second race win of the season. Uh, Eddie Irvine just seems to be good on this game for for some reason. He takes the lead in the championship. We're still second somehow, but I can promise you that that will not stay because also I will be bumping up the difficulty again because it seems like we just keep getting podiums. That shouldn't really be happening in a Sauber. And also, I know it's been high attrition, but still, not 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 really something that should be happening in a Sauber. Hey, but you know, it's 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 fun nevertheless, and it gives us a good chance at getting a better seat in the future. Um, who knows where we're going to end up for 1999 and onwards? Um, it's uh, only our fourth round of our Formula One career, so we're jumping the gun a little bit. But hey wishful thinking but thank you all for watching and i believe the next round is going to be the spanish grand prix so i'll see you guys then